Hi, in this video, we will discuss on superposition principle for gravitational force. Okay, superposition principle says that the net gravitational force on a given particle is the vector sum of the individual forces acting on it. Okay, let's say we have four particles m1, m2, m3, and m4. The total force acting on m. F one net that is equal to the force acting on M one due to M two that is F one two plus force acting on M one due to M three that is F one three plus force acting on M one due to M four okay that is F one four. Okay, let's take an example. There are three equal masses of m kg each are placed at the vertices of an equilateral triangle of side a. Okay, and calculate the force acting on mass capital M placed at the center. Let's draw a diagram for it. A B C is an equilateral triangle. Okay. First, uh, try to understand the centroid of a triangle. Okay. If we join two points from vertex to a midpoint of the opposite side, then we will get a straight line. Okay, that is known as median. If we draw three medians, that will meet at a given point. Okay, which is known as a centroid. For an equilateral triangle, the all median have the same length. Okay, and the distance from centre to the vertex also have the same length. Now focus on our problem. So A B C is an equilateral triangle, and three equal masses of small m kg are placed at the vertices. Okay, and capital M kg. Is placed at the centroid, and we have to find out the net force acting on capital M. So the net force on capital M that is equal to F equal to force due to the mass which is placed at A that is F O A plus force due to the mass. Uh, Placed at B, that is F O B plus force due to the mass which is placed at C, that is F O C, right? Now the magnitude of the now the magnitude of the force F O A. That is equal to G into capital M times small m by O A square. Okay. Since this is an equilateral triangle, so the length O A equal to O B equal to O C. Right. If we look at the expression of F O A, then as O A equal to O B equal to O C, so the magnitude of the force F O A that is equal to magnitude of the force F O B, okay, equal to the magnitude of the force F O C, right? Let's say this is equal to F one. Now we can easily calculate the net force on M if we break it, the forces in components, right? In order to find out the components, we put the coordinate system in this way. Okay, so this angle will be thirty degree because all these three medians 
equally divide the angle around the centroid O. So this angle will be 120 degree, right? And similarly, this angle also 120 degree and this angle also 120 degree, right? As the angle between x axis and y axis is 90 degree, so this angle will be 120 degree minus 90 degree that is 30 degree. Now if we extend x axis in negative direction and y axis in negative direction, so this angle also be 30 degree, right? Now we find out the x component of force F O A, right, which has the direction in this way. So x component will be along the negative x direction and y component also be along the negative y direction. So the x component of the force F O A that is equal to minus of magnitude of the force that is F1 times cos 30 degree right and y component also if o a y y component also minus of f1 sine 30 degree right so this is equal to minus f1 by 2 similarly if we break the force F O C which has the direction in this way. So X component will be along positive X direction and Y component will be along negative Y direction. So the X component of the force F O C that is equal to magnitude of the force that is F1 times cos 30 degree right and y component will be f o c y minus of f1 sin 30 degree right so this is equal to minus of f1 by 2 and the force f o b is along the y direction so x component will be 0 and y component of f o b that is equal to f1 right so the x component of the net force will be sum of the all x components okay so that will be zero because the, these two forces cancel out so x component of total force that is zero Similarly, y component of the net force that is the sum of all y components, okay. So that will also be 0 because minus f1 by 2 minus f1 by 2 that is minus f1 and minus f1 plus f1 they will cancel out. So if y equal to 0, right. So the net force on capital M is 0. Now let's take an example where we apply superposition principle for continuous mass distribution. Okay, so the calculate the gravitational force on mass small m, which is placed at p due to the circular ring of radius r and mass capital M. Okay, so if lambda be the mass density of the ring, then the arc length that is two pi r times mass density that will give you the mass of the ring. So lambda equal to m by 2 pi r. Okay. Now let us find out gravitational force for small mass element dm. Okay. So dm equal to the small arc length that is r times d phi into the mass density lambda okay so the force 
on P due to this mass element dm that is df equal to g into mass element dm into small m by p q square and direction will be along this direction right because p will be pulled by this mass element so p q hat if we break this force in components so the z component will be along this direction and and the component which lies in x y plane will be along this direction okay so z component of df will be along negative z direction minus magnitude of the force times cos theta right because this angle is theta right and the component which lies in x y plane equal to magnitude of the force times sin theta okay similarly we consider the force due to the mass element which is exactly opposite side of the dm that is and we should break it in components and the direction of the xy component is exactly opposite side to the uh, this force right so they will cancel out okay now if we consider the whole ring then the total force lies in xy plane will be zero okay and we are left with only z component so the net force will be f integration over the z component of the force that is okay this is equal to okay the so this is equal to minus g dm times small m by pq square into cos theta right if we write the expression of dm then we will have this by pq square so that will equal to r square plus h square right because pq square equal to r square plus h square okay into cos theta so cos theta equal to h by pq right so h by pq that is square root of r square plus a square right so the integration of for the angle d phi right so this is 0 to twice pi okay so if we put the value of lambda and integrate over d phi then we will have this is equal to minus g capital m small m times h or r square plus h square whole to the power 3 by 2 okay now let's analyze this expression okay so if we put h equal to 0 then total force is 0 physically if we put the ball at the center of the ring that will be 0 because the ball will be pulled from all direction with same magnitude right so for h equal to 0 f will be 0 right now if we put the ball far away from the center that means h is much greater than r then we can express as right 
so as a h is much larger than r so r square by a square is very small compared to 1 okay so that is approximately 1 over h cube so the net force f will be minus g capital m times small m by h square right so this is the expression for the gravitational force between two masses capital m and small m separated by distance h right that means the ring will appear as a uh, point object right 